everybody, my name is Martine Teunissen and I'm from the Netherlands. I am the owner and creator of the company Beleef het Verleden. And if you translate that into English, it's called Experience the Past. Well, what does that mean, Experience the Past? For the past 10 years, I've been working for museums and castles and schools as a historical character. And uh, when I'm an historical character, of course, I dress up in historical clothing. I'm an historian and after my studies, I have been um, researching how people dressed through different times. I have been doing research from Roman times to 20th century. And for the past few years, I have been lecturing about this. I would like to invite you to have a look at these videos where I will explain to you what people wore, uh, how people dressed, uh, what the materials of the clothing are and what kind of uh, necessary pieces of help you need to create the right look. I will show you today uh, the 17th and 18th century clothing. So let me get the costumes and uh, we'll start. And we're back! I'm standing before you in my underwear, the underwear of the 17th century, which means you're kind of only wearing a shirt. And usually, yeah, it's with bare legs, but um, I uh, happen to have put on my stockings already, not to confuse you too much with um, an educational history lesson or a striptease. Uh, I'm going to show you how you build up a 17th century costume. This one is from the period that, um, well, let's say the highlight of Louis XIV in the year 1660, about. And uh, the first thing I need to put on is a corset. This is a corset of the 18th century, uh, not of the 17th century. Uh, but for now I will show you with this. The difference basically for the, well, why, why you can actually see this is an 18th century corset is because it makes a sort of cylinder of your body and um, it's specifically for that type. It doesn't do yet what the 19th century corsets do, which makes actually your waist smaller. So uh, a corset is uh, basically a basis of bones within the fabric and the bones keep your body in shape. So normally of course you would never have a male ser servant uh, dressing you. However, in the 18th century, the stay makers were men. So if you would be a man trying to, well, actually taking the measures of a lady for a new corset, it would be a man doing that. So, uh, well, this is the shirt and the corset together. So as you can see, yeah, it's not making a smaller waist, it's just actually making it rather flat and it's the basis for your costume. Um, on top of that, I need to wear a uh, underskirt, then an upper skirt, and I need to wear a bodice. Very often in the uh, 17th century, if you did not think your own derriere was big enough, you would help yourself with a little cushion to make sure that behind you have a bit more filling. This is a cushion made of, um, well, linen and filled with wool of sheep. So it looks a bit weird this way at the moment, you know, you only have that, but in the total picture it gives what you want. I am missing my servant. It's much easier to dress yourself if you have a servant, a lady's maid. But what? Well. 
So as you can see now, I have, uh, well, the, the form is very much accentuated by the cushion. So we're nearly there. Now we can start with the top layer. This is a, a skirt made of satin. So you see a nice shine on it. And it's a cotton satin. Not sure uh, that would be the first choice for a 17th century lady. Most probably it would be silk. But this is uh, rather good quality for this modern period for a satin. If you wish to be uh, playing an historical correct character or you want to go to a ball, please don't use a synthetic satin, but try at least to go for a cotton satin or for silk, which is of course your first choice for anything considering a historical costume and showing off being a rich lady. And don't forget your maidservant. So there's a little anecdote with this dress actually. Uh, every year I go to France to play an historical character at uh, a castle, which is always set in the historical setting of being at the castle of Louis XIV. And I was asked one year to play the Queen herself being pregnant for six months. So this dress has been made for that character and actually has a very large margin in the back so that you can have a fake pillow under it and the crazy thing about it is when you wear it and you sit down and of course well it's a pillow it's not a real baby but it actually disappears almost in the dress so you have to when you play for the public show really like you know this this is actually the fake you know belly I'm pregnant and it doesn't even show that much which also means that if you wear this either being thick or thin, you all look the same, which is pretty interesting. And then we have the uh, top. The top is a bodice, again with bones in it. It has a nice decoration of gold and pearls. And at the back, it needs to be laced in with a lace, so with a ribbon. So this could be your finished look uh, for visiting the king or being the queen even. Of course it's not yet finished. You will need to add jewellery for example, but also a 17th century hairstyle. Uh, perhaps uh, something on top of your head, it depends where you're going. If you're inside you can have a nice coiffure and uh, some pearls and maybe even some feathers in it. It's mainly the time period where you have got a lot of hair jewelry that is consisting of pearls. And also as jewelry in the 17th century, the most popular is the pearl to wear. So big pearl earrings, nice necklace with pearls. In the 18th century, it's more diamonds and glitter. Um, as you can see, I have taken away the straps of the corset. So if you're making a corset for yourself for the 17th century for this type of dress, then make one without the straps and um, well because it is a um, dress that has been made for a roll being pregnant six months you can see there is quite a bit of space still behind you could make it tighter for yourself but it also depends on if you are used to wearing a corset and if you are uh, comfortable with that if you are going to a ball and you want to wear a corset for the first time, then do not tie it too tight because you may be out of breath. It's something you need to get used to. Of course, I am not yet fit to go anywhere as I am not wearing shoes yet.